But you know what? The frenzy has been building here all week. You know, Bob, when the University of Tennessee plays on any given Saturday here at Nayland Stadium, the fans are wild and crazy. But now that they're number one, this is something else, isn't it? Yeah, the fans, as you said, work themselves into a frenzy. And it really all started on Monday when the Vols got that number one ranking. And six, since then, the fans around here have started a party. And Dan McDonald went out and he found that that party still continues today. And uh, we just enjoy being in the shadows of Neyland Stadium, being here on campus. We love, we love Saturdays in America. And this Saturday in Knoxville is as good as it gets. The Vols are rated number one. The undefeated Arkansas Razorbacks are on the menu. And these fans can't wait to eat. We're going to eat the hog. We're going to kill the hog and we're going to eat it. Look at that dead hog, all chopped up. The tailgate parties have been going on for two days now. Everything is awash in volunteer orange. Fingernails, earrings, faces. Everything's orange to me. It may not win a fashion contest, but it all has a purpose. This is a hat that I bought at the Florida game, and it's part of good luck. So it's kind of, I'm kind of afraid not to wear it. So every week I have to wear it, and the hat brings us good luck. After a week of <laughs> hype and excitement about being number one, now it's time to get serious. It's getting close to game time, and these fans realize that in order to stay number one, the Vols have to beat Arkansas today. And these fans say they have a job to do, make so much noise, the Razorbacks can't think. I come here to yell, scream, and holler, that's just the way we are, I mean. Do whatever we got You don't do. come to a football game and sit on your hands. So the party is just about over. Now the real fun begins. It's time to play football. Dan McDonald, News Channel 5 Sports. And I tell you what, if the Vols should somehow win this game and finish the season unbeaten, this celebration won't end until probably sometime in the spring. And hope the sixth man could be a factor because Arkansas has never played in front of a crowd this large. And the players came out yesterday and they were looking around with eyes about this week thinking, wow, 107,000 is going to all be for the other team. Now, these Vol fans, of course, hope that the celebration continues at least until January 4th in the Fiesta Bowl. So how did this University of Tennessee football team get to be ranked number one and how they've done it so far? Here's a look back now at the 1998 season. In Tennessee's first game, the Vols headed to Syracuse and found themselves trailing by two late in the fourth quarter. The Vols on fourth down and the pass hits the ground, but there, a flag on the play. Pass interference is the call. The drive stays alive and sets up this Jeff Hall field goal for the win. After an off week, the Vols played host to the Florida Gators, and this one was big. Tennessee trying to end a five-game losing streak to the Gators. It went into overtime, and Jeff Hall hit the field goal to put the Vols up by three. So the score, Tennessee 24 to 17, and the Gators with the field goal made will tie the game. Snap, the kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no sir Ree. No, sir, Ree. Final score, Tennessee 20, Florida 17. Pandemonium reigns. The Houston Cougars were next up for Tennessee. The Vols had no problems here, gaining 334 yards on the ground on their way to a 42-7 route. And then came Auburn. The Big Orange jump out to a 17-point lead, but the biggest concern was Jamal Lewis, who tore a knee ligament, and that would be the end of the season for Jamal. But UT held on for the win, 17-9. Without Jamal, how would the Vols running game fare against the Georgia Bulldogs? The answer came from the two Travises, who combined for over 200 yards. The ball defense shut down the explosive Bulldogs to remain undefeated. After their second off week, the Crimson Tide comes to Knoxville. The Vols led from the beginning. They would have an answer for every Bama score, including this 100-yard kickoff return by Peerless Price. The Big Orange on top, 35-18. The next stop for the Vols, South Carolina. The Gamecocks, hoping for an upset, it wouldn't happen. Quarterback T. Martin was outstanding connecting on an NCAA record 23 straight passes for over 300 yards and four touchdowns. What a day. 
Tennessee in the blowout, 49-14. The next unfortunate opponent, UAB. The ball scored on their opening possession and was on top 31-3 early in the third quarter. Tennessee and Cruz control the rest of the way, a 37-13 winner over the Blazers. And that's how they've gotten to this point against Arkansas so far. All right, everybody, when we come back, we're going to break down these two teams. We'll talk about specifics and talk about this game that's about to kick off here in just a few moments. Plus, we'll study the young history of this series. You may learn something. Right now, however, here's a fact for you. Stick around. Much more ahead. And the countdown to kick off is less than a half hour away, everybody. Some last minute tailgating for these ball fans before they hit Malin Stadium. All right, welcome back now. You know, it's been 10 years since the Arkansas Razorbacks have been ranked in the top 10, and it's the first time in a long time they've gone against a top 10 team. Now, Bob Rainey, we know the Hogs are going to be ready. What about the balls? And oh. they remain on top. <laughs> Hope they're going to be ready. Al Wilson said it best earlier in the week, and he's the type of guy who's so intense, he's going to get his teammates ready. He said it's time to put aside all the pain, put aside everything, and play ball. But believe it or not, these two teams are surprisingly similar. In fact, they have more in common than their 8-0 records. In many ways, it's like looking in the mirror when you look at them as to how they approach the, the game. When you compare the Hogs and the Vols, you have to start with the running game. Both know how to do it, and both know how to stop it. Despite the loss of their best runner, UT has actually gained more yards per game without Jamal Lewis. But on the other hand, the Hogs lead the conference in rushing defense, which makes for a heck of a battle at the line of scrimmage. You know, Arkansas don't mind to get down and dirty with you. You know, and that's what's fun about this game. You can go out, when you, we've got to run the football. We've got to establish the run. So it's going to be a challenge for us and our backs. Arkansas's ground game is led by the school's fifth all-time leading rusher, Madre Hill, who's run for over 500 yards this season. But he doesn't even lead the team. That honor goes to Chris Chuck Wuma. But they'll meet their match against the quickest defense they'll face all year in Tennessee. The ball's quickness on offense is also a concern for Hogs coach Houston Nutt, as well as the versatility of quarterback T. Martin. They'll put him on the corner. They'll sprint him out. They'll use him with draws and different things. So well, you've got to be ready to go to defend him. As the ball's offense has improved under T. Martin each week, the Razorbacks have done the same with Clint Stoner. When he's had to pass, he's been effective, throwing to a group of talented receivers led by Anthony Lucas. Some big-time receivers um, coming back from uh, with Lucas. Uh, some, they have some great tailbacks. We just need to uh, apply some pressure to their quarterback and uh, get their offense a little bit right. The most important stat for this game might be turnover ratio. Both rank at the top of the SEC in causing turnovers while giving up very few. The biggest difference in, from last year is just the turnovers. They, they, last year they were turning it over an incredible number of times, and they're just not doing that now. And obviously turnovers are going to be a factor because of the weather. The inclement weather is going to cause both teams probably to run more than they normally would. And I think Tennessee probably has a little bit better passing attack, so they may abandon that a little bit, and T. Martin will do a lot of rolls and sprint out. They're going to do a lot of running because uh, the weather could cause a lot of problems for both teams. So you're going to see a, a kind of a, a game that's going to be won or lost at the line of scrimmage because of running the football because of this weather. Have you noticed the weather behind us, everybody? It is wet up here and getting a little bit wetter. Now, this series between Tennessee and Arkansas is a fairly short one. However, the Vols have won eight of the nine meetings. Our Mark Howard looks back at Tennessee and Arkansas. The first major moment between Tennessee and Arkansas occurs in the 1971 Liberty Bowl. The Hogs lead the Vols 13-7 in the third quarter when Tennessee's Carl Witherspoon recovers the fumble. That sets up the winning UT drive capped by Kurt Watson's 17-yard touchdown run. The Vols prevail 14-13. The next time they meet is in the 1990 Cotton Bowl. The Big Orange hold off a late Razorbacks rally to win it 31-27 behind tailback Chuck Webb, who rushes for a school record 250 yards and two touchdowns. He was a great, great football player and had a, I, what, 200, I forget, 280-some yards or 60 or something like that. And uh, really, if, if, if he was a guy that got stronger as the game went on, probably could have ended up with a lot more. 
Arkansas finally breaks through in 1992. The Vols come in at 5-0 and lead 24-16 in the fourth quarter when the roof caves in. Orlando Waters takes the punt 71 yards to make it 24-22. Then the Hogs get it back and Todd Wright from 41 yards and ball game. Arkansas shocks the Big Orange 25-24. And that was a big win for us. I mean, uh, they weren't expecting us to win. You know, we really weren't expecting to win. So, you know, to come out there with the upset, you know, you know, it reminds me a lot of this year. The Vols rebound in 1993. They build a 21-14 lead, then seal it in the fourth quarter. Had a nine-minute drive at the end of the game for like 14 plays to score and make it 28 to 14 to put it away and I was so tired. First and goal, Tennessee. Manning going to... The Peyton Manning era sees Tennessee dominate the Razorbacks with the UT offense averaging 43 Manning points a game with four straight wins to establish an 8 and 1 overall series advantage. I've had success against, you know, Arkansas when I was playing. Um, and, uh, hopefully, you know, the guys uh, that they have now they have that that same success. And uh, that's the way that uh, looked, and uh, stay tuned now. We have much more uh, ahead for you. We'll take a stroll down memory lane and revisit the last time the Vols were ranked number one. Unfortunately, it lasted only one week. But right now, here's a bit of trivia. We'll have the answer when we return. everybody we knew at the beginning of the week that Tennessee was voted number one by Associated Press and the coaches poll and they found out on Monday that they were also number one in the now all-important BCS poll but how close are all the others well the balls with almost a two-point lead over the Bruins don't forget that Kansas State has that big game with Nebraska today and one thing you have to keep in mind of course is that Florida State and Florida clash at the end of the month so things could greatly change but just this weekend over the next couple of weeks. And of course, they hope they're at the top at the end of the season. Yeah, well, I hope so too, and you, you have to win. That's the bottom line yep. here. If they stay undefeated, they're gonna be either number one or number two. If they lose, they probably aren't gonna be either. They'll go with Florida or Florida State or someone like that. And how do you handle number one? I mean, that's one of the big factors that all teams, we saw Michigan, mm -hmm. you know, we saw mm -hmm. a number of teams, that UCLA's been there, Ohio State's mm -hmm. been there. Yeah, and actually this number one thing is relatively new to the Tennessee Volunteers, but there are other teams and players around the state who've been there and done that, and they were kind enough to offer a little friendly advice. The state's other Tennessee football team may not be number one, but they have players who've been at the top. Defensive back Samari Roll was part of the Florida State team that spent many weeks at the top and won a national championship. He says it brings out the best in you and your opponents. Every time you step on the field, the team is uh, playing their best because they know the reputation you have. That's probably the biggest thing, but uh, it, college is pretty hard to go and defeat them. Wide receiver Chris Sanders out of Ohio State has also tasted the top. Just like this season, his Buckeyes didn't stay there in 94. Sanders says it's easier to get there than to stay there because you become a target. They, they come to get you every week. You know, you, you're vulnerable to get beat because teams are fired up to play a number one team. So that's, that's what's the hard part about being number one. Closer to home, no Tennessee team has been number one more than Pat Summit and the Lady Vols, who are on the verge of a fourth straight national championship. Her advice about wearing the crown? What you have to do is keep your focus on, you know, execution and just being who you've been to be number one. I mean, you don't get there by cutting corners, and certainly you don't stay there. You need to know more about being number one than Pat Summit. I think that's great advice. Just do what you've been doing all along to get to be number one. Don't change anything, and I don't think the Vols are about to change anything. They're 8-0 no. with the, uh, the things backs. that they well, yeah. the, what they've been doing so far this year, yeah. so... Why change it now? So let's hope that it lasts at least more than one week, at least right on into New Year's, shall we say. All right, uh, the Vols don't want to lose it today, and we remember what happened the last time Tennessee was ranked number one, although it only lasted one week, 1956. In 1956, the Tennessee Vols were cruising through the season, led by none other than running back Johnny Majors. However, one former Vol remembers it a little differently. 
we won just like Tennessee is doing, basically on defense. I mean, we had a great defensive team. The Vols were 7-0 going into their biggest test of the season at Georgia Tech. With no score in the third quarter, the Vols put a drive together. Johnny Majors with the pass to Roger Urbano. Watch him take it now. He rumbles down to the one-yard line. And from there, the Vols would punch it in to go up 6-0 and hold on for the win. Tennessee voted number one in the polls after that game. Unfortunately, their reign lasted only one week. The pollsters voted Oklahoma number one the next week, even though Tennessee had won 27-7 over Ole Miss. Oklahoma would eventually be national champions. Tennessee would go on to be SEC champions and head to the Sugar Bowl, where they lost to Baylor 13-7. The 1956 Tennessee Vols finished with 10 wins and one loss that season and spent only one week at number one. And one of the things you certainly can't argue about are the fans. They are what this game and any other game here in Knoxville, especially at Nayland Stadium on a Saturday, is all about. Now, some may call them crazy, say, some may call them obsessed. Either way, it doesn't matter. They are Tennessee fans, and they don't care what you call them as long as you call them. Our Mark Bellinger now took a look at some Middle Tennessee fans who love the Big Orange. From the outside, Greg and Sally Langley's home looks like any other in the neighborhood. But when you walk through the front door, it's completely different. We like to live in orange. Like this sunroom, every room in the home is decorated in volunteer orange. Sally's favorite part of the sunroom is the 30-yard line. The artificial turf came directly from Neyland Stadium. This is like boys have played on this turf right here. This is like a piece, a piece of the stadium right here. It's pretty amazing. If it's orange or says UT, the Langleys probably have it. She just started buying everything in sight. I'd be a rich man if it wasn't for all this orange stuff around the house. There's a lot of orange stuff in Knoxville, too, where the Arkansas game is sold out. Scalpers are having a field day. Students I've spoken with say the scalping begins here at the stadium and all over campus on Friday morning. And if you're trying to buy a ticket to Saturday's game against Arkansas, get ready to dig deep into your pocketbook. And I know the tickets have been going for 250 piece on up. We already have hotel reservations in Tempe. You won't find a more loyal UT football fan than Julie Griffin. Her office has more UT paraphernalia than a Knoxville souvenir shop. Griffin already has airline tickets for the Fiesta Bowl. I really think we're going to go. I mean, I wouldn't have bought my ticket if I didn't. You may think they're a little crazy, but they insist it's only for fun. Sally Langley's twin sister, Sandy, says she has lost a husband over her obsession with the Vols. Well, my orange friends think they're neat, and my other friends think I'm nuts. So. <laughs> what is most amazing is that neither Sally, Greg, nor Sandy have ever attended the University of Tennessee. Mark Bellinger, News Channel 5. How about those fans? All right, when we come back, Bob Rainey and I will give you the keys to the game as we see it, and we'll give you our predictions as well. But plus, it's known as the stick and has been floating around practice all week. But what is it? What does it signify? The truth is, well, the truth is out there somewhere. We'll investigate it. Stay tuned. Almost over. It's almost time to kick off, but I guess those guys trying to get in one last chicken wing before the game. All right, welcome back, everybody. At practice this week here in Knoxville, something very and highly unusual was taking place. Take a look at this. At Tennessee football practices, a strange stick has developed a following. Its meaning unknown, and no one wants to talk about it. I have no comment on the stick. You're having trouble with this case, tell me. A stick? Yeah, oh, no, we can't talk about that. No? Nah, uh, nah, I can't talk about that. That man is afraid. That's paranoia. Why are you so afraid? Yeah, Mom and Dad told us not to talk about that one. <laughs> I'm a little confused. That's a team thing, so no. Well, the man is disturbed. A couple weeks. A couple hours ago. He is not himself. No, I'm going in there. We don't want to talk. <laughs> nah. This case involved something a bit more, um... Freakish? I just want to be left alone. Uh, it's a little thing going on with the team. Uh, trying to get our, uh, focus towards the center. It's a, just, um, little thing. We're trying to, uh, keep focus. The main thing is just to keep our focus is a little, um, ember. Make sure we don't lose the break stride or anything. Sounds like an old wife's tale. No, ma'am. It's not. Well, there you have it, everybody. Bob, who you like? 
I like Tennessee. If they take care of the football and run it well, they're probably going to win yep. 30 to 17. I think they win by 10 points. I'm also taking Tennessee as well. Congratulations to the Oilers. They have a new name. They are the Tennessee Titans from Mayland Stadium. Stay tuned for the kickoff, everybody. For Bob Rainey, I'm Hope Hines. So long for now. I'm Tim Brando and welcome to NASDAQ Amex College Football on CBS. Coming up, regional action. Some of you could see what is a warm-up for the SEC title game when unbeaten Arkansas faces number one Tennessee. Others will see number 12 Notre Dame try to make it 35 in a row against Navy. Joining me as always, the inimitable Craig James, the one and only Lou Holtz. Guys, let's take a look. We've got a Cinderella story, a darling in college football in the Razorbacks. I never know what that inimitable means. I can't even say <laughs> it. But, you know, I think this is one of those classic matchups in Arkansas and Tennessee. It's a schlobberknocker game. Arkansas's offensive line, four fifth-year seniors. The pressure's on their back. Can they sustain and do what they've been doing? Last year, this team, Arkansas, couldn't run the football. 56 yards a game. They've tripled that this year. Tennessee strength, it's their defense, and that defense will be challenged today. But they're playing it at Tennessee, therefore Tennessee's got the edge. You know, Army gave Notre Dame, another service academy, gave Notre Dame all they wanted. What about Navy today, Lou? Well, for 34 consecutive years, Notre Dame has beat Navy by an average margin of victory of 26 points. That means they've outscored Navy by 884 points the last 34 years. However, Navy can be dangerous, it was evidenced by last year. When Navy got beat 21-17, but ended up with the ball on Notre Dame's two-yard line when the game ended. I personally believe Notre Dame will win convincingly. But Notre Dame and the country will leave with great respect for the Naval Academy like all the other past 34 and, years. Uh, by the way, nice work with that calculator, figuring <laughs> up that total. Coming up, it's Arkansas, Tennessee, Notre Dame Navy. Enjoy the games on CBS. NASDAQ Amex College Football on CBS is sponsored by First Union. Xerox, Little Caesars, and by the NASDAQ Amex Market Group. 